on this week's episode of Where We Are, the Iowa caucus is in just 24 hours. So we'll talk about Iowa. How is it shaping up? What can you expect? You're listening to Where We Are. Hello, Where We Are listeners. If you're a longtime fan of this podcast or you're just joining us for the first time today, we want to tell you more about our podcast platform called Spotify for Podcasters. We've been using this platform for over a year and it's been easy to use and new features are added all the time. You can record and edit podcasts from your phone or computer. You don't need anything fancy and you don't need previous podcast experience. When you hit publish, you will distribute your podcast to Spotify and everywhere else podcasts are heard. Video podcasts are also available on Spotify if that's your kind of thing. And with Spotify for Podcasters, you can earn money in a variety of ways, including ads and podcast subscriptions. But here's the thing. You can earn money, but it's a free platform. There's no catch. If you're curious or want to see what it's all about, download the Spotify for Podcasters app or go to www.spotify.com slash podcasters to get started. I'm Mo Rocca, and I'm excited to announce season four of my podcast, Mobituaries. I've got a whole new bunch of stories to share with you about the most fascinating people and things who are no longer with us. From famous figures who died on the very same day to the things I wish would die, like buffets, all that and much more. Listen to Mobituaries with Mo Rocca wherever you get your podcasts. You're listening to Where We Are. We are the Where's. I'm Michael. Hi, Melissa. Hi, Melissa. Hi, buddy. You spent the day, woke up, like six Very early. in the morning. Uh, before you went to bed... You were like, I may need you to drive me. Uh, is it okay? And I'm like, sure, babe, I got you. Uh, you woke me up. Uh, because the alternative was, uh, uh, so you said, if if I can't get an Uber, because you yeah. were going to leave me in the car, because I was going to be home with the girls. Uh, but you were worried you weren't going to be able to get an Uber at 6 a.m. on a Saturday. Yep. Uh, and so you said, you know, I may need you to drive me. And of course, you need me to drive you. I got you. Uh, but you woke me up at six in the morning and you were like, I need you to drive me. And I was like, I really don't need the car. We're three human beings who are very comfortable at home. The human beings mean being me and your daughters. Uh, and so that's what we did. You took the, you left the car at the train station, took the train to New York, celebrated your friend who's getting married. Yeah. Made a vital stop to Italy on the way back. I bought so many treats. It, that is the cool thing about living in Baltimore now, which is uh, New York. Like you leave in the morning, be back. Like you were home at eight. It's mm -hmm. crazy. No, yeah, going there and back, and everybody was acting like, "Oh, I can't believe you came up," and I was like, "It's a two and a half hour train." No, let it's... them think that. Be like, "Yeah, I sacrificed." <laughs> like, I tell like, an, so tell like an Oregon, Oregon taking trail. Taking some time kind to of... myself on a train and reading a book and uh, celebrating one of my dearest friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's such a such a hardship. I know, but you just need to get the the, the credit. Is what I'm okay. saying. Um, but. I'm glad you were able to to do that. Always fun to go to to New York, but uh, we have we have a lot going. This last week was very busy. This week is busy. Uh, the spirit of our politics comes out in nine days on Tuesday, January twenty third. By the way, same day as the New Hampshire primary. Uh, I mean, I I a lot I have on. a thought. Yes, and the thought is. What a wonderful thing it would be if, you know, anytime anyone mentioned January 23rd, people's minds didn't go immediately to the horse race and our divided, divisive politics. But instead, when January 23rd was raised, people's immediate inclination was, that's when the spirit of our politics comes out. 
just imagine the healing that would... I mean, sure, it might lead more people to be aware of my book. <laughs> but let's put that aside from and just think like, you know, in a, in, in a way that's not self-interested and just sort of objective. Mm-hmm. What would you rather have people thinking about when they thought about January 23rd? A New Hampshire primary? Or the spirit of our politics? I, I think the question answers itself. Uh, pretty convenient. I, I can't... I can't... When, when we... When... I mean, not even we. I had no say. When my publisher set the publish date of January 23rd, 2024, in just nine days... Uh, of the publication of the spirit of our politics, we didn't know that would be the day of the New Hampshire primary. I mean, I mean, I think you're making a case for Providence, really. I'm making a case for you to show up in New Hampshire with like, <laughs> with like, what, you know how like in sports games, like hockey games, is, I feel like it's hockey games. Sport games. You, you know how in sport games. Yeah. I said sports games. Yeah, I yeah, guess yeah, it does yeah, sound yeah. funny. Okay, whatever. <laughs> You know they, you know they have the the t-shirt shooter, the yeah, thing yeah, where yeah. they they yeah, yeah. the the big gun thing where it shoots out t-shirts into yeah, the crowd. T-shirt we, bazooka, need, the yeah, t-shirt the, Uzi. The, 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 you need a book bazooka just into the 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 lines in New Hampshire. I mean, hopefully, the, hopefully there will be lines in New Hampshire. Um, I mean, I mean, it, she doesn't mean long lines. She just means hopefully people turn out to vote. Like you just show up to a precinct lines, yeah. and there's only like three people in line, and you just bazooka them with your book. This is the image I have for you on January twenty third, twenty twenty four, when need the spirit to, of our politics comes out we everywhere. Need to, books are we sold. Need to, <laughs> <laughs> we need to reach out to the marketing team. Stat. We have a we have a brilliant new idea. Uh, I think we're going to do an episode on the book. Is that right? We are. We haven't planned it yet. Well, I mean, we have kind of planned okay. it. Okay. That we're going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, what, what more do we need? And then I'm going to interview you on some of my favorite parts of the book that I think uh, will help our listeners the most with the practical parts of your book. Uh, I've, I've done some great interviews over the last week. Um, and it's been very clear. All, okay, most of the interviews, the uh, interviewers uh, read the book, had some really wonderful conversations, uh, mostly like podcast kind of kind of things. Uh, but right, like best case scenario, interviewers are reading the book once. Y- you've read the book a couple dozen times. So yes. the the questions are just going to be, uh, you know, deeply probing. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. I also feel like I need to confess, Melissa. Yeah. I'm looking forward to something else. What? The Iowa caucus. I'm a sick, sick person who I mean, loves politics, loves Iowa. I love Iowa so much. Uh, and, and I've started to be apologetic for it because I know it's just like, 2008 nostalgia like just had one really good experience in iowa so you want to keep on and going you've been back. sold on yeah. rows of corn for life yes um <laughs> i'm sorry i shouldn't stereotype iowa in that but, way but uh, i ch- i have been to des moines yes um well i don't think we've ever told told this story so have we not uh, we probably no. haven't uh yeah why don't why don't why don't you Talk about our our first Iowa experience. Yes. So this was 2007, and it was October of 2007. I had just entered university at American University. You were a year ahead of me. You were at GW. I joined Students for Obama at American, and right away the camp... Lib. Okay. Sorry. Continue. (laughs) Okay. Uh, And... Right away, the campaign, you know, got in contact with a lot of the Students for Obama um, organizations on campuses to say, hey, would you like to go to the Jefferson Jackson dinner in Des Moines, Iowa? Um, 
it'll be basically a place where we can support uh, then Senator Barack and Obama. It, the Jefferson Jackson dinner is a fundraiser, major event. For, I mean, very major for a, a Democratic grassroots leaders, decision makers to hear from the candidates. Uh, typically, the candidates. I mean, it, it can be a three, four hour of event. Typically, the candidates are giving, uh, uh, you know, un. They're not reading from a teleprompter. They they typically will memorize their uh, their speeches. Uh, often, they will debut sort of their closing sort of. Uh, stump speech uh, for Iowa, so it's it's a big deal. Yeah, it's a big uh, deal dinner. In in two thousand seven, I think a lot of people look back on it and say that that dinner um, sparked was a was was one of the big sparks of momentum that uh, that prompted o- Obama to to be able to to uh, defeat Hillary Clinton and John Edwards in in the caucus. Yeah, that's right. And it was that way because the Obama team got basically three to four times as many people sitting in the audience with what was then the very first debut of the fired up, ready to go slogan. They had brand new signs, t-shirts. So we have like the original fired up, ready to go signs and t-shirts from this Jefferson Jackson dinner. I, I mean, the the whole thing was such a typical college experience, like beyond reason. You know, they told us like, oh, you'll be going in a, you know, a a coach, like a big bus driven by a professional bus driver. No, we showed up the next day and they were like, eh, we actually rented some cars for you. We had to drive ourselves with a, we, you know, te- Michael and I teamed up with our, our best friend, Catherine, and then we got three other people to ride in our Chrysler minivan. <laughs> <laughs> to Des Moines, Iowa, we get there, we're handed these t-shirts, we're handed these signs, we're told, here's this new chance, uh, chant, uh, when the senator says, fired up, you're going to scream ready to go. Meanwhile, you know, it takes a while for the dinner to get going. We haven't eaten the whole day. You had to stand in vending lines for three hours to get just a very cold, soft pretzel. But it was one of the formative college experiences for me and it was so much fun and because the jj jenner jj jefferson jackson dinner really launched obama into being a very serious contender it was it felt like being there for a historic moment i was also there for when um then senator barack obama at american university accepted the endorsement of senator kennedy uh and that was a very historic speech as well yeah so that, that's the story of our Iowa, my one and only time that I've been to Iowa. Yeah. And at that time, I did not know that I'd be getting a call weeks after that asking me to go to Iowa. So I thought that was sort of as close as I was going to get, not just to the Iowa caucus, but uh, but to the, to, to the campaign. Um, and it was... It was um, so I returned to Iowa in late November, early December of 2007 and was there through through the Iowa caucus. And there is something special about it. There is something special about um, the, 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 the democratic nature and feel to, to me of the Iowa caucus. There are all kinds of critiques and, and uh, uh, arguments around around a caucus, whether the barrier to entry is too high, but particularly for a presidential primary, I, I think uh, caucuses generally and, and the, the Iowa caucus in particular serves, serves a, an important role. And so... That's what we're going to see uh, in the next 24 hours for the Republican nomination. Um, and we'll see, how, we'll see how, how it turns out. Okay, can you explain how the Iowa caucus works? Yeah, so importantly, one big difference is 
at President Biden's request, the Democratic National Committee has moved Iowa off. It's no longer an early state. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and yep. so, uh, and it's now a, a write-in ballot. So, Oh, interesting. Um, write-in ballots are, I think results are announced March 4th. Fifth, but there are no, there's no real, real contest. It's mostly it'll be for administrative business for the party and choosing delegates for the convention. Right. Okay. On the Republican side, it will be an in-person caucus, like the Democratic caucus in Iowa used to be, and you know, it's not like most voting in the country where you show up, vote in private. You know, so long as there isn't a line. Uh, you know, the, the the process is to go fill out a ballot and go home. The Iowa caucus, uh, and caucuses generally are set up to be sort of communal affairs, to facilitate conversation. So, you know, an introvert's worst nightmare. Um, Truly. And, so, and, and they can take some time. And they're, they can be... I, well, the caucuses I attended were, were really well organized, but but you know they could be messy affairs even if they're if, even if they're run well because uh, you, you know th- there are like public uh, comment periods, and if your candidate in your particular voting location doesn't uh, reach the the minimum then you sort of go back into the middle of the gymnasium and uh, and other uh, candidates, uh, other campaigns will vie for your vote. And so there's like a sorting process. It, it, it is... It, now, now, look, so to me, I've had good experiences, you know, with it. I, I don't think I'd want all of our every state to be run this way i mean not every state could part of why it works is because i was a relatively is, is a smaller state um i the deliberative nature the fact that uh, so many islands pay close attention to the candidates and 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 are are following the process and are engaged and then they they talk with their neighbors about it and and the vote is is made i think that's a beautiful thing the the arguments are look it's hard enough if you have uh you know if you're working multiple jobs if you don't have control of your schedule it's hard enough to show up at the polling place right to vote this is a a time limited event that requires you know sometimes hour hour and a half sometimes two and a half hours you know if something is if if there's some sort of technical difficulties or or some sort of other you know circumstances you know it, it could take a a long time i think the other critique of caucuses is that they are kind of public affairs and so, you know, I was thinking about this, for instance, which is, uh, I tell a story in my book about uh, a woman uh, I met door knocking in Iowa, uh, who, she opened the door and it was, it was immediately, immediately clear she, um, there was some hesitancy about talking and I came to think, that her husband w- wasn't going to be happy if she was talking to um, uh, to someone knocking the doors for a Barack Obama, but we sort of developed a relationship, and and I, I sort of talked this talk about the story in, in in the book. But I was thinking just today, you know, like um, would would Nick Nikki Haley fare better if the voting was private, uh, if 
people didn't feel like they needed to explain anyone why they were voting for Nikki Haley, who is going to receive the support of a lot of Democrats and independents in Iowa, um, and in, uh, or, or who's, who's, who's receiving a, a support from Democrats and independents, uh, I mean, uh, across the, the primary where, where it's, uh, where it's, where it's, uh, you know, allowed. So, 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 the, so there's this critique about sort of the public nature of it and, and is, is that right? But regardless of the debates about it, this is what is happening on, on, on Monday and it's gonna, be our first real glimpse at the state of the race based on actual votes, which uh, which I I'm excited about. I like when people vote. I like when we get to hear from voters, um, and I think it's a very good thing when voters get to have a say, and we'll we'll hear from them on Monday. Yeah, and we'll we'll and, and this is ob- not even like a secondary concern. It should be down the list, but we'll also see if we have yet another election where polling isn't just cutting it, because a new Des Moines Register poll just came out, and Haley has what jumped about four percentage points, uh, up to tw- what up to yeah. 20%? So so let's let's talk about this poll. So the Des Moines Register poll is the gold standard right yep it is poll one of the most you know highly respected polls although um and um uh it usually comes out in the days you know well it it always comes out it's typically the last or one of the last polls to come out before the iowa caucus has a pretty good track record um and saturday evening uh, the poll came out showing Donald Trump receiving 40, 48% of likely Republican caucus goers, Nikki Haley receiving 20%, uh, Ron DeSantis receiving 16%, uh, and uh, Vivek Ramaswamy receiving 8%. Uh, also notably, uh, uh, Asa Hutchinson and Ryan Binkley registered uh, at 1%. Uh, of the vote, though important to say, that may not show up at all right. because you need to hit a threshold yep. at the at the at the caucus location. So those votes, even if they're showing up uh, in a poll, m- may not uh, may may not show up on on caucus night and in, in final tallies. Um, evangelical breakdowns on these. The evangelical vote is significant in the Iowa Republican caucus. Yep. Has often been de- decisive. Uh, it is evangelical vote that in 2016 was something of a problem for uh, Trump. Iowa was, you know, some would say Iowa was uh, the weakest state that Trump. Yep had to face in 2016 which is why people uh, you know people are looking at these numbers and say you know if trump is yes trump if you look at trump as an incumbent then 48 percent is awful but if you're looking at trump as you know someone who's facing significant challengers and you know is right now poised to defeat all of them by 25 plus points uh, you know, then that's that's uh, that's that's pretty strong. That's what he, it currently looks like he's set to do. Um, and part of that is because he receives fifty-one uh, percent of evangelical support uh, in the state, according to the Des Moines Register poll. DeSantis gets twenty-two percent, down from twenty-six percent. This is despite. The endorsement of Bob Vanderplatz, um, I think it's in part due to the fact that we've talked about this on the show. Uh, DeSantis it has not put the kind of effort into the evangelical vote that we've seen previous successful Iowa caucus, uh, 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 previous successful candidates uh, 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 give 
But DeSantis gets 22. That's down, by the way, from 26% in the last Des Moines Register poll. Haley gets 12%, and that's unchanged from December. Um, one other interesting thing about this poll is that while it shows Haley in second, it also suggests her numbers are uh, are fairly soft. So the pollsters kind of suggest that it's 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 possible uh, that that Haley won't be as strong on caucus night. But Melissa, th this is what we're going into. I will say, if if the results are what the Des Moines Register poll has them at, it is maybe not an ideal scenario for Haley. I do think it comes pretty close. You know, I think surely Haley would love to be at 30%. Uh, you know, she'd love to be within yeah. 15, mm -hmm. 10 points of yes, Trump, even closer. in Iowa. But I don't think that was ever going to happen. And I don't think that that was ever like a actual aim of her campaign. I do think that's uh, closer to uh, what they want in New Hampshire. But the real, what I'm looking for uh, on Monday, a few things, Melissa, is Trump over 50%. Or below 50%. If he's over 50%, uh, it, it will be taken to be a big sign of strength. That he has a majority of the support of Republican primary caucus voters in the first state to go. If, you've, if he's under 50, I think there will be some reporting and, and some thought that there's real weakness there. I'm looking, as we've talked about on previous episodes... Um, d does Haley beat DeSantis? If she beats him, this poll has her winning at 4%. That might be just enough for DeSantis to try to continue. There was reporting this week that DeSantis, can uh, the DeSantis campaign, that he he's going to skip New Hampshire and go straight to South Carolina. Um, Maybe a four-point loss, uh, especially if they're both so far behind Trump. Maybe he stays in. It, it might be enough. It might be enough to knock him out. So does Haley beat DeSantis? Uh, does DeSantis' ground game to some of the endorsements he's racked up, does the fact that I think he's closed the campaign pretty strong, we probably won't discuss in detail the debate, the CNN debate in Iowa just this past week. I thought DeSantis was was strong there. I, I, I thought he showed some of what people were hoping to see, Republic, conservative Republicans were hoping to see throughout the whole campaign. He's, he's starting to catch a bit of a rhythm, uh, a bit of a, a bit of momentum. Does he surprise people? And not just come in second, but is it is it something that's more like, you know, Trump 45, DeSantis 30, and Haley at 18%. Uh, that would position DeSantis to potentially knock out Haley in New Hampshire. And I think if DeSantis gets a strong second, I think his campaign will scramble their plans. I think they're planning to scramble their plans if they if they have a strong showing. And I think he'll go to New Hampshire and try to knock her out in New Hampshire so that it's him and Trump in South Carolina and, and the and the future the future states. Um, so so yeah, so is Trump under fifty? Uh, does Haley come in who comes in second and is Haley able to knock out DeSantis here in Iowa? Uh, does DeSantis come in a in a second, but not really beaten uh, Haley by too much, or or does he is he able to get eight points, ten points of separation from Haley uh, in a way that changes the complexion of the race for him for uh, for his campaign? I like all that analysis. It sounds good to me. I think I think all of that is right. 
what do you think is going to happen? <laughs> I I think that the momentum behind Haley is is real. I don't think it's like wildly strong, but I do believe it's real. Uh, I do believe the deflation of DeSantis is also real. I don't think, I don't, and then I didn't, kind of like with Haley, I don't mean like a huge sort of like downgrading of DeSantis's candidacy, but I think it's been a real thing for the past three months. And I think that, you know, if we're going by the Des Moines Register poll, it, you know, Trump at 48, Haley at 20, I don't think, I don't think she's going to hit 20. I think the squishiness of her numbers are, re- of her numbers are, are real. Um, the only thing that I could see happening is that because it is, it is the Iowa caucus is that at certain, at certain, um, voting locations, um, you know, if DeSantis is a weaker candidate there, then if DeSantis, if his voters, their second choice is Haley already, then I could see those numbers becoming a lot less squishy for her in real time. Um, but that, those are some really specific scenarios. So I, I don't think she's going to hit 20 and I don't, wow. and I don't, and I don't think that, um, I don't think DeSantis is going to surge a, ahead of her either. I think Trump is going to have a strong showing in Iowa. Over 50 necessarily. If, if neither Haley or DeSantis get over 20, Trump definitionely really unless Vivek has a, has a strong night because it has to add up to a hundred. Mm-hmm. So, so, um, I mean, I, I, I do, I do think it's very possible that Trump gets 60, 65%. Yeah. Because you, you, um, said it in a, in a sh- very short po- point earlier, you know, maybe Haley in Iowa would do better with, you know, uh, private voting boost versus the caucus. And I think that with Trump, with a Des Moines register poll like that, I and it usually being pretty accurate compared to the other polls, uh, I think that Trump's support is so strong in Iowa that at the various voting locations for the caucus goers, as long as obviously his voters show up, which, you know, the, all this snow going on uh, and the weather, I mean, that could throw a wrench into things, but I think that he'll have, his supporters will yeah, be out. and the and people we'll be are just going to show up. People are just going to show up and feel like he's he's going to win. Yeah, he's inevitable. And like not That's not just I mean. not just at in the caucus, caucus sh- site, yeah. but but the nomination, you know? Like No, that that's what I feel like in a caucus situation, I think that all of that matters deeply yes. and so that's why I think he's going to be over over 50 in the end. Um but New Hampshire, I absolutely can see the um things playing out and that Haley does have a strong showing there. Yeah. Um, and then it becomes a little bit more of a race going into South Carolina, even if Trump does, you know, have a strong performance in Iowa. I still think that right now the nomination should be going to former president Donald Trump at this point, but uh, I'm ready to be proven wrong because New Hampshire really create some momentum and Haley going into her home state receives an even bigger boost because folks see that she could be a winner. Yeah. Um, Let me add something else to watch, which is the evangelical breakdown. You know, right now DeSantis is getting 22% of the evangelical vote. There's a there's a someone is quoted in the Des Moines Register story, you know, releasing the poll results, you know, saying if DeSantis ends up with thirty percent of the evangelical vote, it could be a very strong night for him. And so yep. so it's uh. you know does the Vanderplatz endorsement carry weight? Does you know fifty one percent? So this is the thing, right? So. You know, on the twi- on Twitter, on social media, there will be 
you, you know, oh, um, Trump received a plurality of, you know, evangelical supported Trump more than anybody else. Um, you know, uh, Trump owns evangelicals, da, da, da. As I discussed earlier, just on the Republican electorate generally, yes, if you just view this as an, as a, uh, an, a, an open field, Trump looks very strong. If you view Trump as an incumbent and you see he's only pulling 51% of the evangelical vote, then you say, Get out of the trenches of tedious tasks like managing order fulfillment and start growing your business with ShipStation. They'll help increase profitability by automating your workflow with their simple, easy-to-use dashboard. With it, you can pretty much do everything you need to quickly and easily. Update order information, print labels, compare rates, optimize shipments, and even set up automatic delivery notifications. And it doesn't matter where you sell. Amazon, Etsy, eBay, Shopify. ShipStation can integrate pretty much anywhere online. Another great thing about ShipStation? They can help reduce costs with industry-leading discounted rates from some of the biggest mail carriers. You might even be able to get up to 89% off USPS and UPS rates. So, make this year your most profitable one yet. Sign up for your free 30-day trial at ShipStation.com and use the code SPOTIFY. That's ShipStation.com with the code SPOTIFY. Huh? Like, maybe... Like, what, what, does that, what does that mean? What does that mean for all of our narratives about um, evangelicals and, and Trump? Um, now, to be clear, right, of course, I'm not suggesting in a general election that there's weakness uh, there. But it is interesting that Trump doesn't have a lock on a pretty activist, uh, e- engaged evangelical... Uh, you know, uh, voting population in Iowa, at least according to this Des Moines Register poll, maybe we get to the caucus and he he gets seventy percent of evangelicals, mm-hmm. and okay, you know, good good night. Uh, mm-hmm. But if if he gets fifty or under fifty, if DeSantis pulls thirty, you know, if if Haley, well, so interested to see. I hope that there's a gender breakdown. Mm-hmm. Among evangelicals. I'm so interested to see if Haley gets 20, 25, 30% of evangelical women. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. And, and uh, if there is a gender split there or if, or if it's pretty consistent. But, but that'll be something uh, I'm watching as well. One last just factor to see, uh, to watch. Do young voters, yep. young Republican voters... In particular, show up at, on what's going to be a the weather is, is probably not going to be great. You know, do, do they just go? You know, I'm not showing up uh, in in this environment. If they do, you know, could we see Vivek in double digits in Iowa? He's so that's also something and are, it, does he show some kind of draw some kind of pull with um, with next generation Republican voters or you know does that go elsewhere and if so where does it go is it to a sort of combative uh, you know uh, we love liberal tears kind of is is that where young Caucus uh, caucus goers in a Republican uh, state like uh, Iowa is that where they're going, or are are young caucus goers, if not to Vivek, if not to Trump, uh, you know, are, are is is ha- is Haley someone that they view as sort of a desired future of the party? So, yeah, it'll be an interesting night. Caucus nights always uh, are interesting. Um, and uh, we'll of course be, you know, be uh, be with you next weekend to talk through what happened and the look ahead uh, to January twenty third. Which <laughs> you might be saying, yes, January twenty third, when the spirit of our politics comes out. But actually, we also want you to know. Actually, in this case, I was referring 
January 23rd also happens to be the New Hampshire primary. And so we'll, we'll preview that on, which also happens to be taking place on the day that the spirit of our politics releases. Yeah. What was the book again? It's uh, The Spirit of Our Poli- <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. We, uh, we, have been, we have been insufferable this episode. Yeah, no, I mean, we're just in fever dream uh, mode from uh, just how much there is to be uh, done uh, around, around the book release. Uh, but friends, you'll be hearing from us and next week. Um, you'll get, of course... Immediate uh, uh, or more immediate. Um, maybe I'll end up doing a live thread on Monday after the Bills win. The, <laughs> so the Bills play at four thirty. We'll win. Watch, see the caucus results come in. Maybe I'll do some kind of uh, live thread on the Substack at reclaiminghope.substack.com. Sorry, at where we are. Michael, it's like the second week in a row. I know at where we are. Substack.com, and. Uh, We'll, of course, do an episode of where we are uh, on the uh, the weekend, morning five. So we ha- we'll, we'll have you covered. And then as we uh, discussed, uh, we'll do a special episode where Melissa will uh, talk to me about her favorite uh, parts of the spirit of our politics. Melissa, anything you'd like to add or preview for our listeners? No, it's all shrouded in secret. friends i hope you have a wonderful rest uh of your weekend your long weekend oh yes yes happy mlk day uh we'll see what happens in iowa we'll see what happens uh in buffalo for what should be do we have people who listen to us who are pittsburgh steelers fans because honestly we are coming for you whoa wow I've always had an affinity for Me too. Pittsburgh I, as a blue I love, collar. I love Pittsburgh so team. much. Um, but not on Monday. Nope. We won't have any affinity for him on Monday. Always have affinity for you, though, dear. And and also, in a very different way, for all of our listeners. Uh, thanks for listening to Where We Are. <laughs> Bye. the weekend but i still wanna turn up yeah i still wanna turn up all i want is to go again but you ain't picking your phone up why you messing my head